a lot of students come in, they think they need to have some experience with the tools, the materials, the plasters, the paints. That's not the case. I'm gonna show you a finish from our beginner wall finishing class called Age Bronze Plaster. And it's really easy to do. And if you don't believe me, just keep watching. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is the wall's been painted a base color, any color you want, white, black, it doesn't matter, you're not gonna see it. We're gonna get ourselves some joint compound from the home improvement store. We're gonna use, usually use a five gallon bucket, add a little bit of water in there just to thin it down a little bit. And we're gonna use a roller. The bigger the roller, the better, but I'm working on a small surface, so I'm just gonna use a smaller roller just so you can see the detail. If this is a big wall, I'd use a big roller. Now we're gonna take it and just kind of push it around and get it all over the surface in various areas. We're not trying to roll it on like paint. We're not trying to make it smooth. We're almost just kind of globbing this stuff on. And the heavier the texture, the more interesting it becomes in the end. And if you notice, I'm not going in the same direction. I'm not trying to get 100% coverage. I can leave some high spots, some low spots. And like I said, I'm not really letting the roller roll. It's more of a pushing action. Just kind of pushing it where I want it. If I've got the area covered, the idea is to hide the method of application. You can't see how I did this. This is just part one, but it's okay to leave these voids. And that's why I usually use a darker base color so I can see what I'm doing. If it was white on white, it's a little bit harder to see. All right, finish with that. I'm gonna take my trowel. It's just a regular old drywall trowel. Using a light pressure, I'm gonna come down in various areas and just knock down the high spots. And again, various directions. Okay, we finished with the trowel. Next step, we have to let this dry overnight. If you don't let it dry and you do the next step prematurely, it's gonna be a big mess and we can't fix it. The nice thing is this plaster is on so thick, it's gonna crack. Those cracks are gonna make the final finish more interesting. So let it dry, we're gonna come back to the next step. All right, so it's dried overnight, nice and hard. You can see some of the cracks have started. This is just plain old gold, metallic gold paint from the home improvement store down the street and a regular household roller. Nothing fancy here. This stuff you can get at any home improvement store. So what we're gonna do is now just simply paint the wall with this bright gold. Just roll a nice even coat over the entire surface. That's all we need to do. Don't get too crazy with it. You don't need to make a mess. You just want 100% coverage over the entire surface. So we finished rolling it just like painting a wall. There's nothing any different at this point. We're just putting paint on the surface and as long as it's a nice, simple, clean, easy finish. All right, so we let it dry overnight and we're gonna come back and do the final step. All right, so the gold paint dried. The next step is we're gonna add some highlights to the texture because we wanna bring this texture out. And uh, part about adding the highlights is it's gonna dance in the background. We're gonna have a little bit of color dancing around. So for the next step, we need a rag, or you can use a t-shirt or an old diaper or make sure it's clean, but we just need something clean and soft. We're gonna start with a uh, cranberry metallic paint. We're gonna dip the rag in. Just get a little bit on here, we don't need a lot. And we're just gonna start lightly in a diagonal mat pattern, just highlighting the texture. We don't want it to be too strong. This is just gonna add a little bit of character and interest to it. Now you notice, when I put it on at first, I get a little thick, and then I kinda just soften the edges out a little bit. I don't wanna, I personally don't wanna see harsh lines, but it's up to you. It's where you kinda have fun with it and experiment. That's all we need with the first color. The second color is more of a copper. Again, with the rag. What we're gonna do is come into the other area. We're not trying to overlap intentionally, but if they overlap a little bit, that's fine. But just don't go crazy with it because you don't wanna make a muddy, muddy mess of the piece. You just wanna kinda leave some colors just kinda, like I said, they just kinda work together on the surface. Now you notice I'm not putting a lot of pressure on, I'm not trying to jam it down in there. I'm just getting it on the high spots and getting it caught some of the crevices. We'll come down here, just finish it off a little bit. And again, diagonally, it's fine. Because on a big wall, it kind of just has a nice movement to it. It's a little bit up here. All right, we're gonna finish it using the bright gold. You notice I didn't change my rag. I'm using the same rag. It doesn't hurt it, because that helps the colors blend just a little bit more. Now the bright gold is in case we have any color that's a little too strong, we use it to push some of those areas back for a softer effect. But we're just simply using this gold to push back the copper and the bronze to give it a little bit more depth. We, don't, we want it to have a little bit more punch to it. It can be done at this point, but we have one more step to get to the final age bronze finish. So these are dry already because we're using metallic paints. Uh, a little tip sometimes is to wet your rag with some water. If you want to get some more working time out of the metallic, give it a little bit more time to work. 
it doesn't dry quite as fast and you can move things around and you can add a little bit of water to the metallic paint too to give it a little bit more uh, transparency so it's not quite so opaque not so dark it'll thin it down just a little bit so we're gonna let this dry and we're gonna move on to the final step we've mixed up some black and bronze glaze regular paintbrush like you have probably laying in the garage or down in the basement or somewhere and sometimes we have a little bit of a uh, little spray bottle cheap little bottle from the home improvement store uh, that you'll see what will happen it gives us more time to work so the first thing I do is I spritz this with water just lightly then I dip my brush into the glaze and I'm gonna start now this one I'm gonna kind of like scrub it in I want to get it all into those little crevices and down in there but the key is don't overdo it with this if you use too much you're gonna see we're just wasting it. So I'm just gonna keep working it in. Here's one of these cracks. The biggest thing is when you're doing this part of it, uh, working about a four foot by four foot area, something that's manageable. You don't wanna to go too big because if it starts to dry, it's gonna make it a lot harder to come back. Now we're gonna take the rag and we're gonna fold it for a flat surface. And we're gonna come in here with a light pressure and just start getting off any excess glaze. So you can see I'm letting the, the dark colors, I'm leaving them down into those crevices. I'm not trying to pull it out. That's gonna make it more dimensional. That's why I said, don't worry about it if it cracks. It adds to it. Just makes it a little bit more interesting. So we're just gonna finish it off real quick. You can see this part goes really fast. You're not using a lot of pressure. You're not trying to leave any scratch marks or rag marks on the surface. And this is why I said, don't use a lot of glaze because it's gonna be here. If you use too much glaze, you're gonna be working twice as hard to get it off of the surface. And you can start to see the cranberry poking through and the bronze coming through and just adding to it. Okay, there you go. It's that easy. This is just a taste of what we can do. Imagine what you're going to learn in an entire class. I invite you to look around the website. If you have any questions about any of the classes, give us a call or feel free to shoot us an email. The Faux School is here to help teach you how to transform the ordinary into the extraordinary.